how's it going everyone welcome back to the channel got to do more work on the 73 idi now i thought i was done this truck is actually out for sale on craigslist as i speak but i went to go to a auto glass company to get my rearview mirror glued back on because i went to AutoZone and the kits i bought were just not good enough but anyways was in the parking lot drove down there fine no gave me no problems driving down the road but when i went to go restart the vehicle to drive it in their bay the truck would not start the worker there tried to jump start it with the jump starter and there was just nothing going um, the batteries weren't clicking it would just click when i turned the the key and that was it so i called people i called AutoZone. i called tow truck companies they wanted 150 bucks to tow the truck home about six miles from where i was in town back to my place so that wasn't really an option but i had no choice i was in a really bad spot in town uh, i won't say where i live but uh downtown isn't the, the safest place on earth that area in town is known for cars getting broken into all the time so i had no choice but to call a tow truck for 150 dollars and they were a couple hours out while i was waiting i th thought i'd call people and i called james from central oregon shenanigans and he said get yourself something real heavy duty and he reminded me that i have a tire iron and i whacked the crap out of that starter so hard so hard that i chipped the paint off of it and sure enough that starter loosened up cranked the truck over and cranked and cranked and cranked and cranked till the truck fired up and I, I got it home i bought myself a starter uh, at my local parts store here and that's what i'm gonna be doing today it cost me about 150 bucks after i returned the core but uh i can't sell the truck without a starter so it just has to get done i was right in the middle or of filming this power stroke project that I have off and on and I really thought this truck was done with I didn't want to put any more money into it but here we are I guess that's just how it goes sometimes with trucks so let me get you under here so here's the starter right here and I took that tire iron and I just whacked it as hard as I could several times and it loosened up but that's not a very long-term solution so I'm gonna be I think it's just three bolts and it should come right out. All right, so this thing is absolutely massive compared to a gasoline starter. <laughs> I'm figuring that out bit by bit. Someone has been in here before me and this is a hex head bolt and the other ones are just standard bolts. Well, I haven't seen the other one on the other side. I have to reach my hand back there somehow and get it. But it also has right here is, the Mits is a Mitsubishi logo. It says made in Japan and I don't even know Japan would even make starters for these engines, which I think is kind of interesting, but at the very least, I'm gonna try and get it out first. Okay. So before I take all these nuts off and drop this starter on my face, I wanna at least get these terminals off. It's just real tight, but this is a 5.8 at least on this Mitsubishi one. All right, so it looks like this nut is cross-threaded. So I'm having to push up with a screwdriver while I loosen it off. It's such a hassle. Wrong bolts, cross-threaded posts. It's ridiculous. This thing. Gosh. All right, so in order to get to that third bolt back there, I have to get a super long extension with a half inch nut sneak it past the starter here and the only way I can see it is through a little tiny hole about the size of a quarter through the frame and sneak it back in here all right well this has been a huge hassle I got the top bolt off and I couldn't film that guys because it was just too tight but I have a stool here so I'm gonna let this start to rest when I let it down. So there's one more wire still attached. So here we go. Oh, the Milwaukee's paid for itself already. Such a huge help. All right, here we go. So I'm trying to see what this black wire is connected to so 
have to remove it. Okay, just a little terminal post, that's good. That's easy. All right, just taking this last nut off. That's it, starter's free. So it's finally out. You can see right there, made in Japan. So the hardest part was trying to get around this big solenoid. I had to use a long extension and my Milwaukee ratchet really came in handy to loosen that one out. And then the little black lead goes on this small post. This one grounds itself to the case and then your positive terminal goes here. And just look how buggered up those threads are. You can't even get the nut back on. So this thing has definitely seen some use. All right, so the new starter's in here. I got it rest on a stool right now and I just loosely connected this red wire and then cinched down the small negative black wire up here. So now I just gotta put it in place. Also changed out that hex bolt for a grade eight bolt similar to this. It's slightly smaller, but it'll still grab the threads just fine. It says that it was tested before it was sold, so supposedly it's good. It said right here that it passed. Everything's hooked up, tightened down. It was probably the hardest starter I've ever had to replace. That was not fun. But let's hook up the batteries and see if it works. All right, moment of truth here. <laughs> this thing better start. It's taking me all day. At least turn over. Well, there you have it, guys. I have no idea how well that footage is gonna turn out. I haven't edited it yet, but it was impossible to get my arms in there, a camera and a light all in one little square foot of space. So hopefully that was helpful to someone. That's probably the last big job I'm gonna to do to this truck. I mean, I didn't know I needed to start it at all until yesterday. Big shout out to James over at Central Oregon Shenanigans for giving me that advice to bang on the starter. It unlocked it and it at least got me home to where I, to where I could work on it. Saved me $150 from having to call a tow truck in. So I was pretty stoked about that. One thing I noticed starting it up just now, that was with no block heater. Now before, if I didn't have the truck plugged in, I could actually drain those brand new batteries and have to, I was constantly having to bring my batteries into AutoZone because the truck just wouldn't start without the block heater. I noticed just now it started up fine. So my guess is, is that the starter was just taking too much power it wasn't turned the engine over hard enough and eventually just drained the batteries. So it was needed and I'm glad I replaced it. That truck hadn't run over 24 hours and you guys saw how easy it was to start up. Just took a couple seconds. So guys, thanks so much for watching. That's the last big job I'm gonna do that truck before it's gone and uh, moving on to the power stroke now. Take care guys, see you in the next one.